So first, before I talk about what I want to talk about today, I got to tell you, it still amazes me how many people still, with their running shoes, do a regular just one knot. Guys, be safe with your running shoes. If you're going to be running, I would say either A, buy yourself some speed laces, which you don't have to do any tying at all. B, do not run like this. Put yourself in a double knot, but if you're like me, what I've learned over the years is if after a run, it's a little bit of pain in the butt to undo a double knot, all you do is do the single knot or tie your shoes normally, then grab the, the end and the loop and tuck it underneath, just like this. It's a great little trick that your shoe will not come untied and you don't have to worry about dub double knotting it. Again, just experience I learned over the years, but don't be out there single knotting your shoes, worried about your shoes coming untied and one, having a group to stop and wait for you while you're tying your shoes or even worse, tripping. So today, I really want to talk about running form and focus because those are two things I've been concentrating on recently and when I say recently over the last couple months and I got to tell you how much it's helped my running and not only helped my running as far as speed but injury free meaning just a little ounce of focus and concentration on your form really does wonders for not having shin splints or foot cramps or pulled hips or whatever variety of running injuries you may come into. And I'm not talking about major running issues. I'm talking about just the little things and how you can prevent them happening with just a little bit, a little ounce of concentration on form and focus. Let's start on, let's start with the focus. So focus is one of those things that we rarely do. I would say maybe the more advanced or professional runners are very focused and concentrating on what they're doing, maybe collegiate athletes. But for the rest of us, we're usually fun runs or jogging. We're, it's for exercise and we're just out there, we're lacing up our shoes, right? We're running out the door. You're probably just out there morning or night, whenever you have the time to do it, you're daydreaming. And, and I understand that's what running is all about. It's not only exercise, but it's to clear your mind. It's to think about your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids, whatever. And, and let your mind wander, clear your head, think about things, sort things out. I mean, right, that's one of the great, greatest gifts of running is is you have that time to do that regardless if you're like me you're listening to music or not you totally want to clear your head but focus really should be about your running form and 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 how is it making me a better runner or essentially when it really comes down to how do I put in the least amount of effort or perceived effort but go the fastest and run the smoothest without injury right so it's all about that so what I find is I'm loosely barring um, some techniques that either A, I found online, or B, I was fortunate enough to have a what they call a chi running or a chi running coach. Fortunate chance to run with him a couple days during my group and he gave me some basics of chi running. And you can find a ton of videos out there about chi running. Um, some of them are pretty rough. It's been around for a, uh, a long time. There's this guy, I hope I'm saying his name right, Dan Dreyer, that I think back maybe even in the 70s, 80s, wrote this book, and he's been teaching it ever since, and there's tons of videos if you just Google chi running. I, I use some of the basic principles of chi running, but I don't follow them solidly, but I, I encourage if you're looking to improve your form and run more efficient, check them out. I found them greatly beneficial and I'll just let you guys know that I just ran a Thanksgiving turkey trot last week. It was my fastest 5k I've ever run ever and the whole time I used a little bit of what I learned 
and I ended up coming fifth overall and winning a 20 pound turkey which is pretty cool I'll, I'll, hopefully I can share the picture from the website but um, I ended up doing a 738 per minute mile which is a lot of you are gonna say that's not the fastest but when I started running you know guys I was 11 and a half maybe even 12 minute miles like seven years ago and recently over the, just the last year or so I finally got into the eights and for me to get down to uh, basically a seven and a half minute average is makes me feel really good about how my running is progressing and and this chi running technique or the basics of this chi running technique helps all levels of runners so I don't care if you're a 15 minute per mile jogger or you're a newbie doing 11 or 12 or you're more advanced doing you know eights or even faster than me doing you know sixes or you're even a pro you know the things that you will pick up from chi running are, are wonders and, and, and let me start with this the first thing you learn with chi running is it's all about core and it's all about leaning into your run and using your leg muscles as little as possible. And I know that sounds counterintuitive to what you're doing when you're running because it's all leg muscles. But the idea is, the idea is, and, and hopefully this makes sense, I'll show you. So the idea is, I, I interpret this as, let's say you're a marionette and you have strings attached to your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, and your head. First, think of somebody kind of lifting up your strings so you're you're standing tall right so it's never crouched it's never bent it's never wishy it's always it's always that pulled up straight ahead that's first and foremost and I always say when you go forward it's like somebody attached a string to the top of your head and your stomach and went and constantly pulling you up but it's constantly pulling you forward by your belly and the basic principle is you when you lean into a run all you're doing is your legs you're just kind of penduling like a pendulum you're just taking your legs and you're swinging them and your legs follow what you're leaning into so you're going a little faster you just kind of lean forward a little more if you want to go slower you lean back a little bit but it's never this it's never this it's always kind of leaning forward and just having your legs carry you along and those basic principles, if you just remind yourself every couple of minutes, still give yourself that time for your mind to wander, right? But at the same time, just recalibrate and say, okay, am I pulled up straight and strong? Am I leaning forward? Are my legs swinging like a pendulum? Are my feet as straight as they can be? And then you slowly go. And what I did when I first started this is I would concentrate solely on this and I would run for a little bit and then I would forget about it and then I would say okay while I'm running recalibrate up pull lean swing and do it for a little bit and then eventually over a couple weeks what will happen is maybe you'll run like a quarter mile and go back to your normal way and then you'll run maybe a half mile and then you'll run back and eventually it becomes second nature and you just have to refresh yourself or refresh your mind a couple times during your run another couple important things is when your legs are swinging like this like a pendulum you're never supposed to be pushing up with your feet right so what I found was that is the major cause of shin splints you're using your foot or your foot muscle to lift up your leg you're actually just letting your leg land go back and swing forward L back and swing forward you're never pushing up or pushing off your legs are just doing this and you're leaning forward so that's first to help with shin splints if you try to remember and I know some of us are over pronators or under pronators and some of us got the duck walk right we got the natural duck stance and I call some other people got one or two the pigeon toed don't correct your feet so straight that it hurts but just kind of imagine your feet pointing straight even if they don't totally just correct just that much more all this will help prevent injury the last piece that I found really beneficial is the arms never realize this but when you're swinging your arms your arms should be bent at a 90 degree angle and your elbows should always be swinging back meaning the elbow can go as back as far as you want but it really shouldn't pass the front of your chest 
So when you're running, you should be running like this. So leaning forward, elbow swinging back, again, and, and legs swinging like a pendulum. If you can manage to do all this, again, with the strings kind of pulling you up and a string pulling you forward, if you can manage all these different form correcting techniques while you're running, you will find over, over time, it will beneficially help you tremendously. Like I said, I've only been doing this for about a month or two now, incorporating this, and I have tremendously improved my speed faster than I did for the last whole year or two. So I'm really, I am really endorsing this because I really see it works. Lean and let your legs follow. Again, with your leg, arms like this. Whole time, when you're being pulled forward from your core, like a string or a hook is in your belly button, it's pulling you. And then the last piece that it helps is if you're really getting tired and you're trying to breathe and you're running and you're thinking about your form and you're into it a couple miles, I learned this is a great technique as far as mentally. I almost pretend that the person that's holding the strings, the guy that's holding the marionette, is kind of pulling me up. So it's kind of making me feel lighter on my feet. Because let me tell you, when you're running in the proper form, your feet should never be slamming down. You should never have that shock value. Your feet should literally be just touch and go. You should have, your feet should have more time in the air than on the ground. You're just basically landing and rolling, landing and rolling. Between focusing your mind about thinking about all these things and using some of these techniques that I borrowed from Chi running. Hopefully this really helps your running game. It's really helped mine and I just want to pass it off to you guys and or if you guys have other tips that have really helped you let me know in the comments. Share please because it's only videos like this where I'm sharing with you that help me and I would love to pass that along. So uh, I know this video has been a little different, but as running is becoming important to me, I'd really like to share these techniques with you. So thanks guys, and let me know what you think.